Hi, welcome to a reading vlog. It is April and April is National Poetry Month. I figured I'd do a reading vlog dedicated solely to poetry and nothing makes my heart happier than people celebrating poetry. So I'm just going to take you along my reading experience. I think of Audre Lorde's quote, poetry is not a luxury it is a necessity of our existence and I think that is a quote that beautifully sums up how I view poetry so I have some very exciting news this week today actually was the release day for time is a mother and this is a poetry collection by Ocean Bong it is in my hands. This synopsis just says, In this deeply intimate second poetry collection, Ocean Wong searches for life among the aftershocks of his mother's death, embodying the paradox of sitting within grief while determined to survive beyond it. I'm so excited. I dedicated an entire video to analyzing Ocean Vuong's Spotify playlist titled New Book. So I will be updating you on my thoughts of this. This is literally the this is my 2022 read like this is the read for me so i'll be updating you on my views on this poetry collection as well as if my predictions in that video came true it would not be a poetry video for me if i did not utter the name mary oliver at some point so i am also going to be checking out mary oliver's house of light i'm so excited to get back into mary oliver's writing i'm always in it but this is a new collection for me i have not read this one yet and it says mary oliver once again invites the reader to step across the threshold of ordinary life into a world of natural and spiritual luminosity and to me that's what spring is that's what poetry month is it's just stepping into a world of spiritual luminosity through language and yeah i'm just gonna show also the books that i hauled recently my book haul so i have this poetry collection bless the daughter raised by voice in her head and i also have a the selected poems of gwendolyn brooks you already know which one i'm starting with time is a mother by ocean fog i have to just share with you the epigraph of time is a mother forgive me lord i've died so little than sitting on the floor and discussing books so that's exactly what I'm going to do um I just recently finished time as a mother by ocean Vong, and wow <laughs> I don't even know where to begin but time is a mother is ocean Vong's second poetry collection and this is after unearth we briefly gorgeous if you've read unearth we briefly gorgeous a lot of the themes that were presented in there are tackled in this poetry collection and essentially it is Ocean Vong's ode to his mother and to time and also to his experiences and wow it was so stunning it was a joy to read some fresh new Ocean Vong I wanted to savor each moment of this it's been a few days since I introed the vlog but as I was reading, the first thing that I can think of after I did my analyzing Ocean Vong's Spotify playlist is that a lot of the themes and songs that were present in that playlist also hinted on themes that were discussed here. A major theme that I was finding throughout this collection of poetry was wreckage, floating, it's like images and metaphors on crashes, wreckage, floating, guns, violence, war. Um, of course, it, this also goes into detail of his mom's diagnosis of cancer, so there's a content warning for that. This poetry collection was definitely 
emotional, somewhat dark, but also inspiring at the same time and just very, very beautiful. I feel as though Ocean Vong always has an eye for capturing, for capturing the beauty of the wreckage. And so this poetry collection was broken down into four parts and each part basically focuses on a different aspect of Ocean Vong's life. For me, the first part was more so about his relationship to his father. The second part was about the re to his father as well as coming of age. And then the second part was about his relationship to his mother, how she was diagnosed with cancer and things of that nature. The third part was about a brother in violence and war. And the fourth part was just kind of Ocean Vong frantically, it felt like frantically, trying to reconcile with the world around him and relating his own personal experiences to the world around him. There were poems, for instance, um, in the fourth part that hinted on current events. Um, for instance, the punctum is um, a poem about 350 poorly documented lynchings in California in which the victims were mostly of Mexican, Chinese, and Native American descent. So Ocean Vuong does speak of the atrocities of other groups of people and just, I guess, the violence of history, which is something that I find Ocean Vuong is very, very fascinated by. It's just the violence of history or the history of violence specifically on marginalized groups and yeah the fourth section to me was him reckoning with that as well as the last poem being a summation of Ocean Vong documenting everything that was discussed all the topics presented in this poetry collection and frantically trying to understand and make sense of it and I just thought that that was such a beautiful beautiful way to end I mean, Ocean Vong's endings are supreme, 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 supreme. The Tamir Rice one, which was called Toy Boat, but at the end, it says, the last stanza says, waiting, as if the sparrows thinning above you are not already pierced by their names. And just, <laughs> I had to put this here from that because I'm obsessed. I thought it was just such an impactful ending and he just really flexes his mastery of the English language and it is truly a marvel and delight to read. Another line that I really really enjoyed, it says, what if it wasn't the crash that made us but the debris? And I put that that was a common theme throughout. This crashes, this violence, these moments of supreme disorientation and violence against us or that is being implemented around us and us making sense of that. Um, I thought it was very beautiful and I also going back to going back to picking up on Ocean Vong's Spotify playlist and the last prom queen in Antarctica at the ending says maybe like you I was one of those people who loves the world most when I'm rock bottom in my fast car going nowhere. And I put ode to Tracy Chapman, question mark. Oh, it just made me think about the song, Fast Car. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I definitely could see his, his music, like music's influence on him. He also has a line from the Little Peep song that was mentioned in the playlist. So yeah, I'll leave the playlist linked down below. You can listen to it, read the book. I've also heard reviews of people saying that the audiobook is phenomenal because Ocean Vong narrates it himself. I'm delighted to have read Time as a Mother in the month of April in Poetry Month for this poetry reading vlog. Ocean Vong to me is truly an amazing writer and I enjoyed so many lines. The second section of him detailing his relationship with his mother and her diagnosis with cancer Every single poem elicited a visceral reaction out of me and I was just so touched by them. There's a subtleness to some of them that is almost haunting and the fact that we know the outcome of his mother's diagnosis but we see it unfolding and you feel very disoriented by it. And also I just want to mention the last poem which is titled Dear Rose which um is his mother's name translated into English 
from Vietnamese and it reminded me so much of Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner because Ocean Vong is detailing his mother making fish sauce out of like sardines and there is a really really potent line that I'm remembering from here so it says without touching to make fish sauce you said you must bear the scent of course is salted and crushed a year in a jar tall and this is it almost reads like a stream of conscious poem of Ocean Vong as I was saying detailing his mother making fish sauce and relating that to her diagnosis of cancer ocean vong grappling with his own like substance abuse issues and things of that nature and it really really reminded me of crying in h mart just the relation of food like your mom preparing you something and then you also grieving relating it to decay which just reminded me of the kimchi chapter in crying in h mart so I thought that was interesting as well. I think you should 100% check this out. This was a pretty chatty, rambling catch-up of the reading vlog. This is probably going to be a long one. Maybe a long one. But yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, Time as a Mother is done. I'm so happy I got to read it. Up next, I, of course, am moving on to my other beacon of light in the poetry world. And that is Mary Oliver. And I'm reading House of Light. <laughs> Um, I have not yet started this, but I really intend to start it today and see what happens. Um, what else have I been doing? I binged Bridgerton season two yesterday. I started it like a week ago, but I had four episodes left or three episodes left. And I watched all of them yesterday. I also saw The Batman on Friday, which, what did you guys think of it? Let me know. I really, really liked it. Um... I'm a big Batman fan. The Dark Knight is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, Heath Ledger did amazing as the Joker. Christian Bale did amazing as Batman. And I thought that the new Batman really separated itself. It had its own aesthetic and it just felt a little more emo. And yeah, I really enjoyed the cinematography. I thought the story was fine. And I can't wait to see what happens. So hopefully you get more Batman movies. I'm going to begin reading House of Light by Mary Oliver and update you all on what I'm feeling or what I thought of it. See you soon. started reading House of Light by Mary Oliver. Absolutely love every, like the first few poems, first 10 poems I want to say, were speaking to me on a level that I didn't know I could be spoken to. These poems are very much about like the light in people, in nature, in life. And there is a poem in here, I believe it is called Singapore where Mary Oliver is writing about how she ran into a worker in the airport and how the worker was basically cleaning a toilet and Mary Oliver found the beauty in that moment and she equated the worker to like a bird flying in a field you know just like very typical mary oliver nature poetry that i absolutely love and adore and i think is very very perfect for the spring slash summer house of light is literally like your own piece of light it is very very beautiful i'm smiling while reading these poems and we all know if you read mary oliver if you watch my poetry videos that i love her and I think that her way of writing is very, I don't want to say simple, but it kind of is simple. It's very simplistic, but very beautiful. And that's what I love to see. The next book I'm going to talk about very briefly, it's not really poetry related, but it does use fragmentary prose. So it kind of has that like aspect of, I don't know, you'll, you'll just see. So I finished, I started and finished reading Department Depth. Of speculation by Jenny Offill and I really really love this I will probably talk more about it in a future video but I was reading both of these at the same time and I put a pause on reading this to start and finish this 
this was so good this is a novel that you will absolutely devour in one sitting i would highly recommend taking a few hours if you have to read this it's such a good story it centers on a woman and it muses on motherhood and a failing marriage while contemplating or speculating on outer space philosophy poetry so it kind of ties hand in hand with the poetry reading but yeah it's not a poetry book but it's still really good you should check it out if you do like reading poetry if you're also a fan of bluettes it's a very similar style to bluettes just different subject matter so my plans for today to finish reading House of Lights. I have the worst time staying on topic in vlogs. I apologize. But one more thing that I would like to ask of you. Um, first off, two more things I guess. First, what poetry have you been reading for the month of April? And then also I have another request. I am interested in reading more books centering on women in their mid to late 20s. I feel like a lot of the 20 something sad girl unhinged woman lit that I'm aware of focuses on women in their early 20s and as someone who is a woman and who is also in her mid 20s I would like to just read someone around my age right now and yeah I'm trying to find that like new fictional person who I'm like okay yes this is me in a book so if you have any recommendations on millennial women please let me know i would love to hear them let us get back to the main theme of this video which is a poetry reading vlog <laughs> hi so i just finished i just finished house of light by mary oliver and wow this poetry collection explores themes of love death darkness versus light and nature uses the landscape of nature to muse and ponder on those topics and this was the perfect book to read right now it is slowly becoming springtime it's still pretty cold where i am but reading mary oliver to me is truly just a joy and a treasure I had no idea that this poetry collection features one really well-known line that I see floating around all the time on the internet. I'll read the ending of the poem this summer day and I'm sure you've probably heard this before. If you haven't, I think it poses an excellent question. It says, tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? And that just seems to be the main theme of this really contemplating life and seeing the beauty in life and the last poem specifically I thought was so beautiful. The second and third stanza of White Owl flies into and out of the field is absolutely stunning. I will just read you the part that that really encapsulates what House of Light is about and why you should read it. So I thought maybe death is in darkness after all but so much light wrapping itself around us. As soft as feathers that we are instantly weary of looking and looking and shut our eyes. Not without amazement and let ourselves be carried as through the translucence of mica to the river. That is without the least dapple or shadow. That is nothing but light, scalding, aortal light, in which we are washed and washed out of our bones truly so beautiful i want to cry just like hearing it and in this poetry collection mary oliver is really trying to find god kind of like in creation and in light and in darkness and as that last as those last few lines that i read of the poem tell you it is mary oliver basically looking for the light in life and why we should keep on going it's very just like truly if you have not read mary oliver i highly suggest that you read this one i think house of light is probably my second favorite collection of hers that i've read dreamworks still stands at number one but i'm so happy to be growing my mary oliver collection and then also just look at this cover it's beautiful it's stunning something that i've noticed a lot about mary oliver is that she loves painters and artists 
but specifically painters who capture the beauty in landscapes. She mentions Van Gogh quite a bit in her poetry and she really looks at these people as I guess almost peers or mentors because in a way she goes out into nature herself and observes all of the creatures and the animals and just the rawness of life there just f to be truly in an environment where everything is very natural I think is something that Mary Oliver cherishes. In Fishbone she mentions Michelangelo, Picasso, she has an, a few poems dedicated to Van Gogh but one part that I really liked at the end of Fishbones goes, and I thought of da Vinci the way he kept dreaming of what was inside the darkness, how it wanted to rise on its invisible muscle, how it wanted to shine like fire. And I feel so I could go on and on and on and on and on. I was talking about Mary Oliver, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Don't be surprised if you hear me talking about this book for the rest of the year because it was truly a delight to read. The perfect spring summer read, truly. Read Mary Oliver in the spring and summer. Read her all year round, but specifically in the spring and summer. It just does something to your heartstrings, truly. So good. But yes, that was it. Thank you so much for watching and I had such a good time reading two of my favorite poets, two of my favorite writers. Over the past few days I haven't had as much time reading lately and it's because I'm in a very transitional time in my life. Um, so I've been just dealing with other things outside of here that have required more of my time. I hope you enjoyed the video despite that and I look forward to catching you in the next one. Bye! And I was like, yo.